for context, I started an OnlyFans account over the summer to support myself through school. And things were great until I posted my Amazon wishlist on my OnlyFans page. Basically, the Amazon wishlist shows a list of Amazon items I'd eventually want and people can buy them for me as a gift. Amazon doesn't release your address to people who gift you items, but third-party sellers can, and that's where things became creepy. This is a very scary story, and I feel like it should be shared. A couple of months ago, one night around 2am, I took my dog right outside the house to go to the bathroom. While he was doing his business, I noticed a car parked outside my family home. I saw a figure in the car and could tell they were looking at me, but I couldn't make out their face because it was pitch black outside. Feeling a bit uneasy, I packed my dog to take him back inside, and as I started to move to go back inside, the car parked in my driveway. I sprinted back inside and locked the door, but they never approached my house. Weird. The next morning, I went outside to check the mail. There was an envelope addressed to my OnlyFans name with $20 inside of it. That's it. No notes. Just $20. I was still currently at home with my parents who had no idea about my OnlyFans account, so I didn't mention it to them. A week later, I moved to my college town to get ready to start school. At this time, I stopped posting for the time being until I could figure out how they got my address. I've watched enough crime shows to know there's a possibility I could be in danger. For reference, I live in a duplex with a gated parking lot. So one morning, I was planning on vlogging my trip to Target because I was planning on starting a YouTube channel in the near future because OnlyFans felt unsafe. Since I got started on the vlogs, I kept my camera in my car. So I left for Target, and when I got to my car, I realized it had been ransacked, and my vlogging camera was missing. I know, it's my fault for leaving it in my car, but I was using it the night before, and since I live in a gated area, I didn't think I'd be at risk of getting robbed in my car. It wasn't in plain sight either. I had hidden it in my glove box. I used that camera to film my content, and the SD card that was in there had all of my unreleased photos and video footage if I ever decided to make a channel. From that, I knew they stole my camera just for the SD card. Luckily, there are security cameras all around college campus, so a couple of days, I was able to watch the video recordings of exactly what happened that night. On the recordings, it was around 1 p.m., and I witnessed this man break into my car and find the camera. And he didn't touch any of the seven cars on the lot, so I guess he knew which car was mine, which suggests he had probably been stalking me for a while. After he got the camera, he walks around the duplex until stopping near my window. The bedroom faces an outside street, and my blinds are broken, so it's very easy to see in. I have a curtain, but it doesn't cover my window all the way. This person moved towards my bedroom window and stood there to watch me sleep. We sped up the footage times four and see him standing there for two hours. I have no idea why this person didn't try to break in, but thank God he didn't. I suddenly felt super paranoid and wanted to investigate this further. Since I knew the serial number of my camera, the police were able to find it. Apparently, the camera was sold to a pawn shop, but my SD card was missing. I believe the police are still trying to track this person down, but I broke my lease and moved to a new place, so hopefully that will keep me safe. So, I think this is all over. Since then, I haven't posted any more pictures on my OnlyFans account, but... Given that a guy became obsessed with me to the point of tracking down my address and watching me in my sleep, I don't know if starting a YouTube channel would be a good idea. When I was 13, I developed a habit of talking to strangers online. Every day after coming home from school, 
I used to talk to the numerous people on Omegle. Some decent people, some creeps, but nothing as bad as this. One day, after a day of school, I jumped onto the computer, switching on my usual choice of music, and just unwinding from a rough day at school. Watched some YouTube videos, a few episodes of Friends, and then after dinner proceeded to visit Omegle. After a few strangers and perverts, I came across a decent guy called Chris. Now, Chris and I exchanged messages for around 40 to 50 minutes, when I just told him a little bit about myself, just some general information. Nothing specific though. What I'd like to do my pastimes. He told me he was 18 years old and working at an ICT company as an apprentice. He seemed to have many of the same interests, which was a little cool because it gave us a lot to talk about. I casually told him that my web browser was acting up, to which he said, hey, I'm great with computers. My job involves working with computers. You should totally download this application and I'll see what I can do, with a huge amount of enthusiasm. Me being as naive as I was, agreed. The application he told me to download was either TeamViewer or Splashtop Streamer. And the reason I wasn't hesitant was because there wasn't anything on my computer. No personal details, just come schoolwork and video games. I followed his instructions and I told Chris that I'm popping downstairs for 5 minutes and that I'd be right back. I came back in within 3 minutes seeing him erasing my web history. This didn't seem sketchy as I had a problem with my browser. I asked him after he was done what he was doing and he said that the problem is all fixed, and it was. I thanked him and we spoke for about 20 more minutes. We planned to speak the following evening with some tags, so the system matched us together. The next evening came and we talked. This time, however, he started acting up, asking why I was so late, and that I said I was going to come online at 8 p.m. Now, I don't remember the exact time, but I know for a fact I was not even that late, and at most 15 minutes late. I told him not to speak to me like that and he asked me why I was getting so angry. He went on saying, sorry honey, I hope you can forgive me, I love you. Now I'm not even into guys and these messages were freaking me out. I told him to stop and he just sent me a few smiley faces. He then went on to say, I know where you live and proceeded to send me my location. He also sent messages saying, I know what school you go to and things of that sort. Our town is a small one and there wasn't any way that he could have just guessed that. I eventually stopped messaging him and went about my life as usual. Things were uneventful for the next few days until the following Saturday when I went shopping with my friends. We all grabbed something to eat and then sort of just chilled on one of the benches chatting. That's when a man then popped next to us asking if he could sit down. I was a little apprehensive, but my friend said they're public seats, and we couldn't stop him. He was standing on my friend's side, but when we allowed him to sit, he shifted right next to me. He just sat still there, not moving, not saying a word, but just looking straight. He then turned toward me and smiled. I tried to get up, but he grabbed my shoulder, to which my friend started shouting. He then started shouting himself, directly in my ear, and then casually walked away. My friends walked me home that night. It got worse then, when someone started posting blank letters through the letterbox. I was unable to answer anything, random bangs on the door that, when we went out to answer, no one was there. When I passed my driving test, I got a letter congratulating me, it was typed up. We still get the letters, just not as frequently. The police seem to not believe a single word, but it's supposedly being investigated. I'm starting to get really scared for my own safety.